この番組は5連のスポンサーの提供でお送りしますイエーイおぉこの番組は SheeSideOfFragrances Thanks, Jimmy Wales. Your radical left leaning ultra biased online lie depository is good for something. But what's Shisido got to do with anything? In my best DJ Slopes impression, I shall say, But I think we're getting a little ahead of ourselves. You see, to understand why the overpriced Japanese cosmetics you'd find in Debenhams are relevant to this episode of Sushi Bites, we have to look at these guys Hopper and Rocky. These two ridiculous looking penguins were the mascots of Shisaido's super hard hair moves some years back. Yes, super hard. Get rid of all those crass thoughts, it's for the hair on your head, not anywhere else. And these cute little critters proved very popular thanks to Polygon Pictures' animated commercials. Popular enough to warrant not one, but two video games for the Sony PlayStation. The Iwatobi Penguin Rocky X Hopper series of games focuses on the daily lives of the two penguins and the various mini games they find themselves embroiled in. Lots and lots of mini games. The first game is so rough it could be considered a prototype. Even the game's premise is basic and uninspiring. Rocky and Hopper see a television commercial for some kind of competition held by this bizarre skeleton bird pirate guy thing, and they decide to take part, almost instantly receiving their invitation in the post. The two set off to take part in whatever challenge thing this is, but also must complete minigames on the way to the competition itself. The competition, which you know is also completely comprised of minigames. First, they encounter whatever the hell this is, with his academic mortarboard on his head. There's, he's got to be some kind of professor, but the glasses make him look crazy, and I'm not sure if that's a mustache or fangs. He subjects you to two minigames a long jump game and a shell collecting game. Both will lazily get reused later. When I first played this game, I cried PLAGIARISM when I heard the game music. This is most definitely Let's Groove by Earth, Wind, and Fire. And this is so clearly staying alive by the Brothers Gib. What the hell gives? I was more than ready to accuse Iwatobi Penguin of blatant copyright theft, but it turns out they actually got the license to use these songs. Ha! <laughs> they bothered to get the license and then still use butchered MIDI versions over the real songs. The next person you meet is this mad looking walrus. Oh yeah, oh yeah! Oh yeah! Oh yeah! This guy's minigames are long jump, except it's now high jump, and a dancing game which isn't in sync with the music. Oh, and the music? More butchered versions of classic disco songs. Nice. After beating the walrus Eggman Goo Goo Gajube, Rocky and Hopper reach the pirate skeleton bird thing and fight his two minions, and you guessed it, it's all minigames. And the first contestant reuses not one, but two minigames from earlier. The first two you played, Long Jump and the Shell Collecting game. The third game is this infuriating juggling bowling pins game, which is. ugh. Take a look. Ugh. 
This particular minigame can go to hell, as can the rest of the upcoming new minigames. This one sucks. This one sucks. This one sucks. Oh, and this one sucks too. You beat the pirate guy, beat him again, and then you win a check. That's it. This Japanese adaptation of Slumdog Millionaire could do with some work. Where's the giant robots? Iwatobi Penguin is a charming but thoroughly uninteresting video game. The look of the game, the excessive use of FMV and the character models have this uniquely different feel to them than anything else I've played on the original PlayStation, oozing with appeal. However, I just plain up can't recommend it. On the plus side, there is a multiplayer so you can play these minigames with friends. If you so desire. Somehow, Iwatobi Penguin managed to get a sequel. In this game, Rocky and Hopper now run a detective agency. Eh, we'll roll with it. Sure, why not? They finally get a job from Pinky, who wants them to find her missing cat. And how do you do that? Minigames, of course. Rather than change things up and make the minigames good, the developers decided to keep the tradition set by the first game and make another batch of shit minigames. The first one has you jumping across boxes, pain in the ass. Then there's dialing a phone number, jeez, mix and match the sound effects, break large objects, dodge bombs, catch popcorn that rains from the sky, climb a tower, shoot targets, throw yourself at a billboard. To be fair, there's a lot more creativity used this time around, and we haven't repeated a minigame at all during the story mode. However, what I just showed you is all there is. A lot of these minigames aren't that practical either. Why walk through a minefield if there's a path going around it? Why would a popcorn machine shoot popcorn in the air? And how the hell do you manage to produce purple popcorn? What's wrong with the machine? The main villain of the game is this guy, this creepy, freaky dog thing. And his defeat, it's, it's so ludicrous. I'm just going to show it to you. The sequel is where the true absurdity is, and I love it. Out of the two games, if I were to recommend one, it would be the sequel. But that's if I were to recommend one, which I don't. They're both astonishingly short games with little meat to them, and the post story is like trying to pick the last remaining morsels off the bone. Might be worth one play out of curiosity, but I don't see anybody buying these games besides collectors. As for Rocky and Hopper, where are they now? They were revived by none other than Iwata friggin' Naomi, creator of Gregory Horror Show. Two things I love, brought together by an extremely talented creator. Damn, it's a good time to be alive. This has been Sushi Bites. Thanks for watching.